Good morning, everyone. My name is Prakana Maharaj, and my project is entitled Genetic Diversity and Ancestry of Unfarmed Cocoa in Trinidad. Okay, so I'm just going to give a brief introduction on the genesis of Trinitario in Trinidad and to introduce some terms like ICS and TSH. Um, Trinidad was originally planted with cruel types from Central America. However, following the devastation in 1725, which resulted in considerable loss of cocoa trees, a millenarios were introduced. Natural hybridization between the remnant Criollo and newly introduced Amelanado types resulted in the Trinitarios. Found and conducted a survey of the Trinitarios during 1930 and selected 100 trees, and these were collectively referred to as imperial college selections, some of which were propagated and distributed to farmers to increase productivity. Despite these efforts, the, the cocoa production continued to decline, especially with the introduction of the witch's own disease into Trinidad in 1928. As such, the government of Trinidad initiated a breeding program that began in the 1950s and resulted in the TSH Trinidad Selective Hybrid, which were released to farmers in the 1970s onwards. So the recently planted varieties in farms in Trinidad with either the TSH or ICS types but it is still believed that much of the genetic diversity in Trinitario were not captured and is still present in the form of relic cocoa with an existing and abandoned cocoa estate. So the overall objective of this study is to understand the genetic variability in cocoa farms in Trinidad and to establish a core collection within the ICGP, International Cocoa Gene Bank of Trinidad. This study aimed to assess the level of nuclear genetic diversity on cocoa farms in Trinidad using 192 slip markers, identify trees pre-TSH to obtain a better representation of the natural cocoa diversity in Trinidad to determine whether the genetic structure of farmed cocoa differs among localities in Trinidad and to re-examine the ancestral contribution of the Trinitario lineage. So why is, this for, why is this study important? This study is important as there is limited knowledge of the nuclear genetic diversity of unfarmed cocoa in Trinidad. Currently, there are only 150 accessions representative of the Trinitario group from Trinidad can serve at the ICGP and Huey, 82 of which are the ICS at Palm collected during the 1930s and 68 are the TRDs from a survey done in Trinidad during 1991 to 1992, which means that there is still a wealth of untapped genetic diversity that can be acquired from cocoa farms in Trinidad for conservation at the ICGT, which can be exploited for other attributes that may not be available in the present ICS and TRD collections. The collection and conservation of Trinitario will also provide a wider gene pool for plant breeders. So with regards to the methodology, a total of 170 farms were visited throughout the island. On farms, usually five to seven old trees that had phenotypically different parts were sampled. This amounted to 876 samples across the 170 farms. This map shows the sampling locations and also the sampling locations with respect to the different agroecological zones. The different zones are the NRC, Northern Range Central, NREP, Northern Range Eastern Peninsula, CF, Central Plant, EFCR, Eastern Plant Central Range, ELL, Eastern Lowlands, and SR, Southern Range. Okay, so just a brief look at the results. The first analysis conducted was a match analysis among the on farm samples and the reference samples, which was done to identify duplicates in the data set. The reference samples consisted of samples representative of Mortimer's FL2008 genetic clusters, and these were the Amelanado, Criollo, Pentamina, Fluare, Guyana, Iquitos, Nacional, Nani, Maranon, and Toulouse. Six other accessions were used, and these were the ICS, TRD, DOM, GS, and Refractario 1 and 2. The DOM and GS are from Dominica and Grenada, respectively, and the Refractarios are from Ecuador. So the match analysis revealed that 112 on-farm samples were exact matches to 20 specific reference samples. Of these 112 samples, 33 won exact match to ICS 95, 
and 41 one exact match to IMC 67. Other reference accessions that were exact matches to the farm samples were from the GS, GUM, TRE, and PA groups. So PA is coronary and represents a marinon genetic cluster. So a genetic diagnosis, so genetic diversity was assessed for the on, on farm samples using a software called GenLX. If you look at a graph, you would see that the lowest expected heterozygosity level were found in the Criollo and Guyana genetic groups, and the highest were recorded for the on farm samples, which was 0.38. So yeah, 0.38. The ICS, PRD, and Refractario 1 expected heterozygosity levels were comparable to the on farm samples, and the overall pattern was also observed with Shannon Diversity Index. With regards to the agroecological zone, if you look at the graph, you would see that the highest level of expected heterozygosity was recorded in the eastern Plant Central Range and the lowest levels in the eastern lowland and northern range central. Overall, the genetic diversity were comparable across the different agroecological zones and comparable to the TRD, ICS, and Refractario 1 accession. So, this PCOA shows the position of the zones with respect to each other and the zones' position with respect to the reference groups. The PCOA total variation for all three axes accounted for 68%. And this shows that the northern range central and the central flat are further apart and the other zones are between these two. The agroecological zones were closely related but significantly different from each other, except for three pairs of zones that were not genetically different. And these pairs of zones were the eastern plant central range and central flat, one pair, eastern lowlands and the central flat, another pair, and southern range and northern range eastern peninsula. You would notice that all the agroecological zones are within the same proximity to each other, and the closest reference samples to the zones are the TRE, ICS, Refractario 1, and P. You would see the plot also has SCA, which is Scabina, and Scabina represents a contaminant genetic cluster. The most genetically distant group from all reference groups and agroecological zones is Creole. So Trinidad unique samples or the on-farm samples were subjected to a core selection analysis to extract a subset of samples that are representative of the entire collection using a software called PowerCore. PowerCore identified 77 samples as being representative of the on-farm collection. So the graph shows three different data sets. And for each group, you can see that both expected heterozygosity and Shannon diversity index were comparable would suggest that a good core selection was done. Okay, so with regards to the ancestry of the on-farm samples, overall, the most frequently occurring genetic groups in the data set were Amelanado, which accounted for 524 samples, Priolo, 486 samples, Iquitos, 362 samples, Pentamina, 306 samples, and Maranon, 206 samples. Nine samples had a single ancestral origin, three were Amelanados, four were Iquitos, and two were Maranon. The most frequently occurring combination overall was Amelanado Criollo, which accounted for 184 samples. The second most common ancestral combination was Amelanado Criollo Scabina, which accounted for 70 samples, followed by Amelanado Criollo IMC, which accounted for 55 samples. The table on the on the presentation shows that the on-farm samples contain ancestry from all of Mortimer's et al. 2008 genetic groups. So with regards to ancestry by agroecological zone, the majority of the samples are to Amelanado Criollo were located in the northern rain central and the least were located in the eastern lowlands and central plant. The majority of the Amelanado Criollo Scabina was located in the eastern plant central range and central plant the least were located in the southern range. And the majority of the Amelanado Criollo IMC were located in the eastern plant central range again, and the least were located in the central plant. So what does the, all of this mean for the farmers? The similarities among the agricultural zones may provide farmers with opportunities to consolidate their resources, as well as forming farmer cooperatives and establishing a common fermentation system. 
differences based on location forms an important part in leveraging genetic information that can allow some zones to push for the uniqueness of their products. Bat samples of particular genetic groups can be explored by farmers, which can provide a selling point advantage. Farmers have the option of propagating and selling trees that are of interest. Like, for example, this has been done in Cameroon and the farmers have been quite successful. There is also the potential for farmers to be compensated adequately if their material is used in future breeding needs. So, to conclude, overall, the data suggests more rich genetic diversity in cocoa farms in Trinidad. The study found that there is additional genetic diversity from farms which strengthen and broaden gene bank that is different from the existing gene bank material. There are group differences among some agricultural zones, and this provides a better understanding of the spatial distribution of genetic, genetic diversity in cocoa farms. It corroborates previous studies by Johnson et al. 2009, Motilat et al. 2010, and Yang et al. 2012, which show that Amelinado, Creole, and Upper Amazon materials such as Pentamina and Iquitos played an important role in the Trinitaro lineage. Um, lastly, the recommendation it is recommended to collect four samples for phenotypic assessment and evaluations to evaluate the flavor attributes of four samples collection of additional samples in abandoned area and more intensive sampling on certain estates where these old types are located. And also to encourage farmers to conserve some of these old types, especially ICF-95, that is known to be resistant to frost recovery. And also it's highly recommended to conduct a similar study in today's So this is just a brief list of some of my references. And I would really like to thank the estate owners, also my supervisors, Lambert Motilal, Dr. Eddie Box, and Professor Maharan, as well as Francis and Sierra and Vinish, who are really fundamental in being part of this project, and as well as the CRC staff. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. If anybody has any questions, comments, please feel free to ask. Thank you.